Would you believe when you sing it? Forever.
Come on, if you have something to be thankful for today. God, thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, Jesus.
with you today. For people who are gathered around your name, people here today to praise you. Lord, I pray that we truly can be people who in every circumstance, in every situation, we know the power of praising you. Lord, I just believe even in the services, people praise you as we focus on you, as we see you, the author, the finisher, the beginning, the end. Father, we can make you our focus. Then in that we can believe also to see your miraculous supply, to see you bringing breakthrough into the lives of people, giving a new day, giving a new purpose, bringing new hope. Father, what a wonderful thing it is to be able to call Jesus our Saviour. Come on, sing it, church, one more time. confession that we will praise Him always. Amen. Great to see you in the 11.15 a.m. service. Early November 2015. And I must say, how nice it is to be home. Fantastic. How nice it is to look out at all your angelic faces. Praise God. Surely the best looking church that I've seen for four months, because that's how long we've been away, four months. By far the longest we've ever been away. We had such a great time. God moved, our team were amazing. Some of these guys were involved in all a part of the tour. And Man, I tell you, we just had sold out tour. We literally, it was sold out before we even started, 18 different cities and every part of the trip was just incredible. And so God kept us fresh. So great to see everyone. And uh, right now we're gonna partake together in communion, which is something that we do toward the beginning of each month. And uh, it's a significant thing. It's not just a religious ceremony. It's kind of like, you know, if you like, if you wanted to take it into the context of the time, it's kind of like Jesus with his best mates, his best friends, and just saying, hey, um, you know, I'm, I'm moving on to the next phase. And uh, come on, let's, let's eat, let's basically, you know, eat, have this last meal together and make sure you don't forget me. And you know, the great thing about communion is, uh, is it's all about remembering. Remembering everything He has done, that He has won on your behalf and on my behalf. And it's kind of also about forgetting because sometimes we remember all the wrong things. We remember our mistakes, our failures, our pains. And I think this is a great opportunity for us to decide what we will remember and what we won't remember and just focus on who Jesus is, what He's accomplished, what it means for you and just love Him and thank Him for everything that He is. So come on, we're gonna be seated for one moment. Our team have got something for us. We'll pass the bread and the cup along those rows. Hold on and we'll partake together in just a moment.
We're singing about all He's done for me, all He's done for you. You know, that bread and that cup are so significant because it's more than just really, uh, you know, uh, like I said, a religious ceremony. Everything about that is pointing to Jesus, pointing to everything that He has done for you. So powerful. So we're gonna partake together just a moment. And as we do, uh, I'm gonna pray over these prayer requests because the answer to every one of these needs relates to what we're about to do. It's all about the death and uh, the bloodshed, and then of course the resurrection life of Jesus. So, Father in Jesus' name, as people partake, how could we ever forget You? All You've done for us. Come on, you can take the bread and go on ahead and take the cup as well. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we're so grateful, so grateful. So grateful for all that's been purchased on our behalf. And Lord, I just bring every one of these needs and requests to You. You know each and every single one of them by name. Father, physical, material, spiritual needs. Lord, people believing for breakthroughs and families, salvation to visit their household. People believing for colleagues and friends. People believing for sickness to be overcome and healed. Lord, I believe that wherever there's pain, wherever there's sickness, wherever there is a bad report that we can thank You for Jesus. Lord, You won our healing. You won our salvation. You won, Father, our peace. So no matter what the need, Father, Lord, people believing for You to work in so many different areas of their lives. And yet we have a God who hears our cry and who delivers us out of all our trouble. And we thank You again for all You've given us, Lord. In Jesus' Name, Amen. atmosphere of faith. Praise God. <laughs> you guys can be seated. I'm just looking at your shoes, Taya. They look expensive. They look very expensive. Just tell everyone, where did you actually get those shoes? Okay, there we go. Um, well, I accidentally left my shoes behind because I was staying at a friend's place last night. And I couldn't wear Converse's, so I had to go to the 24-7 Kmart at Blacktown West Point <laughs> at 11.30 and $20 from Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> $20 shoes. How good is that in Kmart? Awesome. It's so good, though, having Marilyn Monroe's cousin in our church. We're fantastic. 
I reckon you should sing happy birthday better than Marilyn Monroe. No. Amen. Well, look, we've got lots of praise reports. God giving people promotions and new career and someone had a remarkable turnaround after surgery, quick recovery. And so thank God for each and every one of these reports. And hey, it really is great to see everyone. And uh, we missed you all a lot. And we greatly appreciate all the prayers that came our way. So on that, the Reverend Doctor, Robert Ferguson. Thank you, Brian. How cool it is to have Brian and Bobby back. Come on, church. Give them a clap. So good. Well, we're going to come around our giving right now, continuing our worship. So unless you've given during the week, this is your opportunity to give. And uh, no pressure whatsoever, but why don't you check out, see if there's a blue envelope near you and get ready. Lots of different ways to give. And while you're doing that, while you're getting ready, I suggested last week, if you were here, that the church has a triad of threats, the world, the flesh, and the devil. But I got a little specific last week. I was suggesting that in a church that is over 30 years old, I think one of the major threats to us is familiarity. I wanna just address another one just briefly, and that is weariness. Weariness can stop us doing the right thing. We keep doing the right thing, but we just get weary. And Paul addressed that in Galatians chapter six and verse nine and 10. And he said this, do not become weary at doing good. And then he said this, because at the proper time, you will reap a harvest. I don't know how long you've been in this church doing the right thing, giving and contributing, but don't get weary because at the proper time, He is the Lord of the harvest and you will reap a harvest. And then it says, take every opportunity to do good to all people, but especially the household of faith. This is our opportunity to make a difference. This is where we can make a difference in the world. And the thing with opportunities are that they can be restored, but they can never be regained. You can get another one next week, but you'll never get this one back. So why don't you take your gift in your hand, make the most of every opportunity because God is the Lord of the harvest. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, thank You for these wonderful people. Thank You for their faithfulness, their commitment, their contribution. Bless everyone, we pray in Jesus' Name. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. And as we just receive that giving, I think you may recognise this person on the screens. Check it out. I haven't always been a Christian. I mean, I grew up in a home that believed in God. And I always thought God was up there somewhere. I was down here. He did His thing, I did my thing. And hopefully one day it would all work out. The problem was I just had this missing piece in my life. I tried the parties, I tried the drugs, I tried the lifestyle, I did whatever I wanted and yet it left me so empty. Eventually, I ended up losing my licence for one month. So I'd hitchhike to the surf every day because I worked also down at the surf and it seemed like every second car that picked me up were Christians. And for this whole month, I just couldn't get away from them. They all, you know, telling me about Jesus. And I just said, yeah, 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 whatever you reckon. You know, I was more interested in getting a lift. But what I found was these guys, they didn't talk about a God up there. They actually talked about a God they knew. And it got to the point where I thought, you know what, I've got nothing to lose, giving Jesus a go. And so I'll never forget, I rang a friend of mine, his mother was going to church and I asked her if I could go. And I'll never forget going that night The preacher got up and preached and and what was funny was that everything he was saying was like he was talking to me. And next thing you know, he asked people if they didn't know Jesus and wanted to know Jesus, come out the front. And so much of me wanted to go down the front, but I'm thinking there's no way I'm going, I don't even know these people, I'm not going down the front. And I just remember something inside and compelling me to go. Next thing you know, as I was getting close to the front, I, I find myself crying. When I got to the front, we prayed this prayer. And when I prayed that prayer, I actually encountered Jesus. And all I can say was that the whole, 
all of a sudden was filled. And I realised that that missing piece was Jesus. It really was the most pivotal point in my life because all of a sudden in meeting Him, I discovered my, who I really was and it radically, radically changed my life forever. You're gonna love Sam tomorrow. He and Kylie, such a blessing and for anyone who doesn't know, Sam who was up there talking about his salvation uh, and riding that bike through what well, wasn't a very rough track, by the way. <laughs> um, he's the campus pastor here at our Hills campus. So we're looking at the screens. Let's have a look at the screens one more time. Right there. And uh, we've got church news. excited am I about next Friday night in our city campus in Dank Street, Waterloo. We're going to have our young and free. And you know, you don't have to be that young uh, to feel young. And so I'll be there next Friday night. Not only will I be there, I'll be in the front row and I'll be dancing, jumping and uh, whatever else we'll be doing there. Worshiping Jesus with all the young people and you're welcome as well. So it's at, uh, as I said, in Waterloo at a campus there. It starts at 7 p.m. And it's gonna be an amazing night, all these fresh, new, young and free songs. And you are as young as you feel, you know, Sergey. You should come along. You should come along. You could do a rap. It would be fantastic. So, hey, all our other campuses, if you're, you know, if you're a flight away, hey, why don't you think about it? Come over to Sydney for Friday night and be part of what will be a historic night tonight. Praise God. So we're looking forward to that. And it is great to see everyone in all our different campuses. Bobby and I are so excited to be home. Loved the men's event in Brisbane. It was amazing. You know, they come up with all these crazy things like the monster truck and these massive model aeroplanes and you know, I mean, hot rods like you've never seen. And uh, you know, they got it all up there. And, and you think, why do they manage to get all this together so well up here compared with down here where we struggle a bit to find all that stuff. But then you remind yourself it's the Bogan State. And so, <laughs> All righty, well listen, we're blessed because we've got uh, John Gray gonna come bring the Word today and we're thrilled to have him bringing the Word. But before he does, right before he does, Bobby is gonna come on up here and she's gonna say hi. She'll come up there. I thought, I thought you had forgotten me, babe. <laughs> okay, right, hallelujah. She's Very lost. Quickly. Don't you run in. How are you, church? I just wanna say a quick hi and tell you, like Ryan said, we're so thrilled to be home. There is no place like home. Okay, are there any women in the house? There, that's the sound I know and love. Okay, what's happening Tuesday night? Yes, amen. And so you know what? Here's a little invitation to, for you. But um, I'm excited for Tuesday night and I really pray that every single woman who calls Hillsong Church home will actually make the effort, come out, be under the ceiling with all the other ceilings around the country. And you know what? I said it in the last service, but there is nothing more beautiful, um, 
strategic and forceful as when the women come out because God has a plan and an agenda for us and I'm excited. I actually think that we are on the crest, on the edge of something phenomenal. And so sweethearts of the earth, it would be awesome if you came, okay? I sent you an email and you can pass it on to a friend. Let's come out in force, amen? Yes? Beautiful. Are we introducing the amazing Mr. Gray? Is this what we're doing, darling? Are we singing a song? <laughs> I guess Bobby wants me to introduce our guest, John Gray. <laughs> we're going to sing Praise the Name of the Lord Our yes, God. Yes, that's what we're going to do. John Gray and his wife, Aventa, who are here, are great friends of this church. John is one of the pastors at Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas, along with Joel and Victoria Osteen. He looks after the Wednesday night service, gets 8,000 people out on a Wednesday night to hear him preach each week. So we're very thrilled to have you here. Come on, let's sing Praise the Name of the Lord Our God. The Son of Heaven rose again Oh, trample death, where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the King Oh, oh praise the name Something about that song just touches my heart. I grew up in a small Baptist church in Cincinnati, Ohio, and we used to sing hymns, and this song uh, has the feeling of a song that will be sung for generations to come. I love that part. Then on the third, at break of dawn, Son of heaven rose again. I'll trample death Where is your
who is mighty to save, mighty to heal, mighty to restore, the great I am, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, on a Sunday morning, the first begotten of the dead, Jesus Christ, the King of Glory. Somebody better bring a podium over here. Don't be nervous, sir. <laughs> like, I reckon I should wait till he finishes. It's all right. Well, I'm out of breath. It is an honor to be here uh, with the Hillsong Church. My wife of almost five years now is with me my beautiful wife, Aventer. She is the mother of all of my children, all two of them, a three-year-old boy and a two-year-old daughter. They are 11 months apart. So I give honor to her for <laughs> giving me a legacy. I'm grateful and we are honored to be here. Let me pray with you and then let's get into the word. Is that all right? Lord Jesus, thank you for you being who you are in the lives of the believers. Now be glorified in this moment in the word. The worship has already gone forth. But now, God, sanctify us through your truth. Thy word is truth. So let the word remain. And even if they don't remember me, let them remember you. In the name of the only one that matters, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Can we give him one more praise? You may be seated. What an awesome worship team. Wonderful atmosphere that has been set. And Taya, I like your shoes. Last service, uh, I shared uh, about uh, one last worship from this subject, one last worship. What would you do? How would you praise if you were one worship away from everything changing? Knowing that every person here has a different faith journey, a different faith story, that we've all come into the knowledge of Jesus through individual salvation. Salvation is not a corporate entity. It is an individual strategic relationship that heaven initiated through the blood of Jesus. And this is the great beauty that all of us from different backgrounds are now under one banner, the blood of Jesus. For the blood of Jesus is the great equalizer of all men. And no matter who you are, where you're from, what nation, what background, we all have commonality in Jesus Christ. It makes us family, and I'm grateful for that. I do not believe in worshiping men, but I do believe in giving honor to men. And I do wanna give honor to your pastor who, along with his wife, have led a vision that has changed the way the world sees Jesus. I wanna honor you, Pastor Brian, and your beautiful wife. My wife and I are better people because of your example and your commitment and the teaching of this church, we're very grateful uh, to be a part of what the Lord is doing. Uh, I'm going to shift, and I'd like you to do me a favor and go to John chapter 11. John chapter 11, reading from the New King James Version. While you're going there, I'd like to share a couple of scriptures. You can write them down if you want, but I want you to focus on John chapter 11. Hebrews 11 and 3 says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Somebody say words. words. The word of God. The worlds were framed by the word of God. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. An author is one who brokers 
in words. Words have creative power. Words have the ability to frame reality. Words have the ability to give you a mental image or picture that is very hard to let go of. If I tell you that I saw a pink kangaroo with boxing shorts on outside in the parking lot, you don't have to be there to now have that image in your mind because words have creative power. And for those who say words don't really matter, How many married people do we have in the room? Keep your hands up, married people, let me see. Fellas, when you saw that beautiful specimen of femininity and you realized that you wanted to pursue her and you slicked back your hair, you didn't walk up to her and say, hey, you. You use words, <laughs> and your words were able to cause her to say, he's worth taking a second listen to. By the way, you didn't see her first. She saw you. She just didn't say anything because women have already so- spotted who it is they want Jesus to bless them with while you're sitting up worshiping. She's already said, God, I just thank you for him. I thank you that you've chosen him for me, and we're going to have three kids, and they're going to be beautiful, and we're all going to have matching tattoos. And so... When you walk up to her, she's like, me? I didn't even, I didn't even know you noticed me. Yes, she did. (laughs) Words have the ability to create relationships, to establish long-lasting bonds. Words can also push people away and cause you to miss opportunity if you use your words unwisely. Words, one of the key currencies in the kingdom. For the first time, we are introduced to the person of God in the book of Genesis. We notice that God speaks in response to a problem. It is dark. Darkness is over the face of the deep. And the spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And so God speaks a solution to a problem. And God now continues through his word to speak solutions to problems. Words have creative power. They don't just leave our mouths and linger. They actually move in the direction of our destiny. And so for anyone here who may be in the middle of a life that's been interrupted by circumstance, interrupted by bad decisions, perhaps you've made some turns not even of your own volition, but maybe a bad family situation, or maybe you came into a misfortune, I want you to know that God, in his love, has already declared the end from the beginning, and you will get to the intended destination point. And this story is not up for debate. And I want you to know that no matter where you are in your journey, on a personal, spiritual, or financial, economic, or business, level, I have been sent this morning and now probably the afternoon to declare to you three simple words, and if you grab them, you will be encouraged for a long time to come. It's not over. It is the title of the time that I have with you. It's not over. In John chapter 11, we see Jesus getting some bad news. And the story goes like this. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Now, I want you to do me a favor and jump to the 11th verse. Jesus says this, our friend Lazarus sleeps, 
but I go that I may wake him up. Jump to the 14th verse. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Again, my title is It's Not Over. For anyone with a dream, a hope, a vision, a calling, anything that the enemy has tried to interrupt, I want you to know that God's about to supernaturally push you in the direction of the thing that the enemy has been opposing. Please understand that only one of these ethereal beings is limitless. Our God is limitless. The enemy is limited. So if he is using resources to attack you, it is because you are clearly a threat to his agenda. So please do not be offended by the attack of the enemy. Be encouraged by the attack of the enemy because apparently you're doing something right. In this story, we see Jesus and his disciples. And the Bible makes it clear that he was in a, an area called Bethabara beyond the Jordan. And he is here and he is teaching and he is preaching. He's doing his Jesus thing. You know, people walking around with withered hands, he's stretching them out. He's doing all kinds of stuff people couldn't hear. Can you hear me now? He's opening up ears. People who are blind, my shadi, they're opening their eyes. It's unbelievable. Don't tell Stevie Wonder I did that. Um, <laughs> Jesus gets an urgent message from some people who were sent from Bethany, a town which is about a day's journey from where Jesus was. So it took a day from the time they were alerted. It took them a day to get to Jesus. They get to Jesus. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, hey, amen, I'm so glad we found you. Listen, it's, it's some trouble in Bethany. Jesus is like, what's going on? It's like, hey, your man, Lazarus, you know your boy, Lazarus, your best friend. He's sick. It doesn't look good. It's a bad deal. We need you to come right now because if you don't show up right now, he's not going to make it. Need you to stop what you're doing. I know all of y'all want to hang out, but Jesus, this is his homeboy. He's getting ready to come down with us. Jesus, we got a camel out here sitting on some rims. We ready to roll. We need you to go. We got a monster truck. Joe LaBelle is driving it. And then, you know, normally you would think Jesus would freak out like, you know, like he's texting like, oh, in me. Because <laughs> he's God. Okay. Um, Jesus is like, he's sick. And like, yeah, man, it's bad. You got to come now. Help him. He ain't going to make it. Oh, this is bad news. Mm, mm, mm. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified through it. Oh, man, that was nice. I like that, how you said that. You ready to go? No, I just, I just told you what it was going to be. I just... I just said it. Yeah, I heard what you said. I'm going to need you to go ahead and get on this camel. We got a double hump camel right here, and we need you to get on. We need to roll. We don't have time. He's sick. He's sick. The medicine's not working. We tried to get him some Baraka, and hopefully that might have you know, helped him, but nothing's working. We need you to come on. I just said the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God that the Son of God might be glorified through it. We need you to come with us. I just left because I sent my word. I'm getting ready to preach it like I feel it. I need to remind you in here, if he said it, it has to come to pass. I don't know who this is for across multiple campuses, but before you lose heart, go back to what he said, because it is the principle of first things. If Jesus said it at the first, it must stand at the last. In this moment, Jesus was confusing people. He said out of his mouth, this sickness is not unto death. Then you go to the 11th verse, he's like, our friend Lazarus is asleep. Then in the 14th verse, he's gone. It's over, he's dead. 
Now I'm confused because you said here that the sickness is not unto death. Then you confused me more and said he's sleep. Then over here you said he's dead. And then you further complicated it by saying, and I'm glad I wasn't there. <laughs> now you're being rude, Jesus. Mr. Baby in the manger, Mr. Walk on Water. Isn't it funny in the life of a believer? Have you ever prayed for something before it got really bad? You prayed, you know you got it out, you know he heard you, and it's like heaven was like, wow, that was a great prayer. Man, that was amazing. Yeah, I just, I'm gonna need you to move on this because this is kind of a big deal in my life. I know, that, mm, it looks bad. I'm gonna just hang out here for two more days. No, I don't, I don't think you understand, uh, God of heaven and earth. I'm in trouble. Mayday, help me. I prayed while it was bad, and now, two days later, it's worse. What are you doing? Hey, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Save all your scripture. Get down here. <laughs> I'm already sick of it. You ever felt like God was taking too long to deal with your issue? No one will say yes because you're all really saved and deeply spiritual. <laughs> but I'm sure there's somebody in one of these other 87 campuses that you have that says, yeah, mate, <laughs> I've prayed. I wondered where God was. You ever felt like sometimes right when you were getting near the end of your prayer, heaven put your prayer on mute? God, I'm in trouble and I really need you to... <laughs> in Jesus' name, Amen. I saw what you did, God, and that's real. <laughs> I want you to know that the silence of God is not his displeasure. When he doesn't answer your prayer in the time that you think he should, it is strategic. Because God is ultimately concerned with two things in the life of every believer. His glory and your development. And his glory cannot fully come if you putting your hands on it could somehow help you. There are moments when God has to let bad go to worse so that there looks like there is no hope of redemption. And then he steps in and shows you the miracle power that heaven has and its possession for you. I want you to know that the silence of heaven is not his displeasure. It is his development. God is developing you. He is maturing you so that we do not view Jesus as Santa Claus, that we come to Jesus. And God, I want a red truck and I want my rent paid and it would sure be nice to get a promotion on my job. And he's saying, ho, 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 sure, my child. No, this is more than a give me what I want relationship. Real relationship says, I'm gonna worship you whether or not you do what I want you to do because you are worthy of praise, because you are God. And if I seek first the kingdom, kingdom of God and all of your righteousness, everything I need will be added unto me. And so I'm just going to keep worshiping even though I don't understand what you're doing. Yeah, Worship when prayers have not been answered is a sure sign of spiritual maturity. Jesus, Jesus waited two more days where he was. Now imagine the other side of the equation. Lazarus was probably still alive when they sent the messengers. Lazarus, the Bible says, was the friend of Jesus. He was not a disciple. He was not a follower. It was his friend. How do you feel if Jesus is your best friend? You're pretty confident, right? <laughs> I don't feel good. <laughs> Doesn't look like I'm going to make it. Somebody call Jesus. That's my man, you know. He'll come down and see about it. Somebody go get Jesus. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not worried about any sickness. Jesus is my friend. And we sing the song, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. And we're singing a song. But what happens when your friend shows up late? Lazarus is probably looking out the window. He'll be here any minute. I hope he hurries up. Before you know it, bad went to worse. 
But let's catch what happened over here. Jesus said something that changed everything. This sickness is not unto death. The moment it left his mouth, let me tell you that his words took off towards Bethany. They glanced at where Lazarus was laying, but it didn't stop in the house where he was. The words continued to travel to the cave where they would place his body. I want you to know that what Jesus spoke went not to the issue, but past the issue, to where the issue would end up. I want you to know that Jesus is not into band-aids, he's into healing. Jesus doesn't just mess with the scrape on the arm, he deals with the issues of the heart. When Jesus does a miracle, he does it the right way. And so the word went to the cave, waiting on the body to get there. And this is the power of Jesus. He can speak to the end from the beginning because he is the author. And finisher. I'm about to preach like a black man, so just get ready. He is the beginning and the end. He's the alpha and the omega. So it really doesn't matter what happens in the middle because Jesus already spoke what it was going to be at the beginning. And this is the power of worship. It's easy to worship at the beginning and it's easy to worship at the end. But can you worship in the middle? Oh, Hillsong family, can I encourage you to have the discipline to worship in the middle when your prayers are not being answered, when there are still issues between husband and wife and uh, father and child, mother and child, when there's issue with the employee and the employer, can you still worship in the middle? Worship in the middle costs you something. It is a faith activated worship where you wake up and say, God, I just want to bless you this morning. Nothing is going right. I just want to tell you I love you. Nothing makes sense. And even if it doesn't work out today, I'm coming right back here tomorrow to bless your name. I love you. I honor you. In Jesus name. Amen. The next day I'm back again. It got worse, but I want to put a smile on my face and this makes no sense. But I heard that you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all I could ask or think according to the power that's working in me. And so I'm going to lift my hands, not because I feel like it, but because you are worthy. I will not allow my emotions to dictate my worship. I will not allow my circumstance to dictate my worship. And so I call you worthy and holy. I love you in Jesus' name. Nothing changes. I'm back the next day. Now the devil thinks you're crazy because most people leave when it's not going their way. How dare you keep coming to this church week in and week out and the women show up on Tuesday and things turn all the way around and God is using this church to do miracle signs and wonders and some of you are still waiting on God to answer your prayer but here you are Sunday morning hands lifted, mouth open, heart receptive. That is the power of worship in the middle. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to give God worship in the middle. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. And don't just worship for yourself. Worship for somebody else that can't worship. Maybe you got a family member you're believing to get saved. Give God a praise that God's going to save them. I dare you right now to do a faith praise. You know, in America, we're a credit nation. We like to swipe credit cards. Anybody here have a credit card? Well, in America, they swipe them, and it'll say something like transmitting, processing, like it'll have this little thing and it's nervous because you're not sure how much you have on the card. So you swipe it. It's like transmitting. You start praying in tongues. Receiving. Transmitting. Then it says approved. Hallelujah. And you said, I knew it was there the whole time. I was just tricking you. I just... 
Let me tell you what praise in the middle is. It's swiping a credit card saying that God is able to, to do whatever you just believed him for. When you can praise in the middle, that's giving God worship on credit. Even though the answer hasn't shown up, you trust his character enough to give him glory before the answer arrives. Is there anybody that can give God a credit praise? Just a praise on credit. You know he did it before, he can do it again. If he saved before, he can save again. If he delivered before, he can do it again. So Jesus waits two additional days. So he gets the word. It took him a day to get there. He stays another day. That's two days. He stays two days where he is. By the time he gets there, the man's been gone four days. Funeral is over. Here comes Jesus just walking into the city. Ha ha! What's up? Hey, hey, hey. The Bible says Mary and Martha were in the house. Martha heard that Jesus was near and she runs out to Jesus. And she says, if, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus says something that changes all of the New Testament. He says, your brother will rise again. She said, I know he'll rise again at the resurrection at the last day. He said, no, no, Martha, you missed it. Resurrection is not an event. Resurrection is a man. I am the resurrection and the life. I need somebody to get this. I know that we're culturally different, but right now I need you to let out your inner African-American and understand that what Jesus said right then was to let the devil and death and hell know that there's somebody more powerful in their midst than a doctor's report, than a graveyard service, that Jesus can turn it around even when it looks impossible, even when it's over, it's not over. When Jesus is in the midst, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Though he were dead, yet shall he live, and those who live and believe in me will never die. Do you believe this? The Bible says that Mary stayed in the house. Mary was angry. She had an attitude. You ever been angry at Jesus? She was in the house just mad. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm not going out there to see him. We asked for him days ago. Now he wants to show up. Mr. Walk on Water, you couldn't come see about your friend. You couldn't come see about your friend. Ah, hi. Who do you think you are just showing up? Put that food away. He does not get a plate. No, he doesn't. Put the rolls away. Mm -hmm. Put the juice. He doesn't get one thing. You don't show up four days late. Wanting to eat, you don't eat nothing. Eat some of that manna, whatever you got in your little pouch. You and your little funky friends, all 12 of y'all, stay out of my house. If you study the name Mary in Hebrew, it means rebellion. I said in Hebrew, you're Australian, so don't worry if your name is Mary. Like, oh, thanks a lot, mom. <laughs> but study it, it's true. <laughs> the Bible says they got word to Mary that Jesus was asking for her. And even with her attitude, she decided to run on out there. Because something about Jesus calling you breaks down even the hardest heart. And she took off. The Bible says she, she fell down posture of worship and she said if you had been there my brother would not have died the next thing out of Jesus mouth was unbelievable he said show me where you've laid him now catch this Mary and Martha said the exact same words but they got two different results Martha got revelation I am the resurrection. But because Mary came in a posture of worship, she got activation. Do you know worship activates the supernatural power of Jesus? Do you know worship activates? 
even in the midst of your rebellion, in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your questions, will cause Jesus to say, show me where you laid your dream. Show me where you laid your broken relationship. Show me where you laid your fractured childhood. Show me where you laid that thing that you think no one will ever be able to help you with. Show me where you laid it. And I'm going to teach you something about who I am because I've already spoken to it. They said, Jesus, you don't have to do this by now. He's four days dead and stinking. He said, you don't know. I sent my word before they put the stone over the cave. Because the stone helped me, Holy Ghost. When he gets to where Lazarus is, he says, roll the stone away. The word stone in the Greek would translate law in the Hebrew. Jesus said, get the law out of the way. Grace is in the building. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. The grace of Jesus can take what the law has designated as unsavable and redeem it with one word. Jesus, when he spoke that this sickness is not unto death, I need you to catch that he didn't say Lazarus wouldn't die. He just said he wouldn't stay that way. See, the devil is an interrupter, but he wants to be an author. But heaven never gave him a pen. So he can read your story, but he can't write your story. I feel God in here this morning. Devil, you can't write in my book because Jesus is the author and finisher of my faith. And he finished my book by signing his own name. And he signed it not in ink, but in blood. It is an irrevocable covenant. And I am in blood relationship with Jesus Christ. So no matter what the devil tries, the blood has the final say. Roll the stone away. And then Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible says that they buried Lazarus not in a tomb. This is very important. They buried him in a cave. Have you ever spoken into the mouth of a cave? Hello? You know when you speak into a cave, what happens? Say it again. Echo, 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 echo. Why? Because when a word hits off of different surfaces, it must continue traveling until something absorbs it. And so the only thing that had enough tissue to receive the word was the body that was there. And so Jesus knew Because the Bible says, by the power of two or three, a matter is established. Jesus sent his word to that cave before the rock could seal it because he knew that this kind of miracle was going to be so unbelievable that nobody would be able to agree with him. So he sent himself ahead of himself so he could agree with himself when he got to the cave. Every now and then, you need to agree with what God has already said about you. People already think you're crazy. Give him another reason. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. You need to agree with what God has said about you. And if nobody else will get an agreement, you need to believe the word of God that he has spoken over you. Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And out of the cave, wrapped up like a mummy from the thriller video, his name is Jesus, Jesus Christ. It's close to midnight. Something evil's lurking in the dark. <laughs> Under the moonlight, the Holy Spirit really wants your heart. So close your eyes. And realize this is not imagination. (laughs) And all the while, the King of Kings, he wants your very life. Your very life. His name is Jesus. Jesus Christ. Bled and died and rose just 
wants to give eternal life. His name is Jesus. Jesus Christ bled and died and rose to bring you eternal, eternal life. Lazarus came out of the grave. Y'all can stand up, the service is over, I'm already late. (laughs) Lazarus came out of the grave because of a word that Jesus spoke. And he became a miracle to let the earth and the devil know, I have all power. I can speak to dead things and they get up. This was impossible. And Jesus steps in and says, it's not over. If he can take something that didn't just newly die, but was all the way dead and resurrected, what can he do with your life, with your dreams, with your vision? He can turn it around. His name is Jesus. He is available to you. And no matter what situation you find yourself in, it's not over. Be encouraged today. It's not over. Bad doctors report. It's not over. Issues in your family. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, Cause us to remember that no matter what we see, you have the final say. The entirety of our lives hinges upon your voice and the word that you speak. No matter what it looks like, we cling to your word, what you have promised us, what you have said about us, and until we see what you have said, it's not over. While heads are still bowed and eyes closed, if you are here and you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, perhaps this was your first time here and you said, who is the large brown man? I'm just a guy that has been radically changed by the love of Jesus Christ. And what he did for me, he can do for you. And if you're here and you need to begin your relationship with a king that has already paid the price for your redemption, then this afternoon is your moment. On the count of three, if you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus, can I lovingly suggest that you take this free gift? The salvation of your soul is as close as the confession of your mouth and everything else changes from that moment. On the count of three, if you're here and you need to give your life to Jesus, Lift your hand as high and as unashamed as you can. Or perhaps you're here and you need to rededicate your life. You could not be in a better church across all locations. One, he loves you. Two, he died for you. Three, he rose for you. One, two, three, hands. If you need to give your life to Jesus, let me see those hands. I see that hand. Are there others? I believe there, I see those hands. Amen. I see that hand. Amen. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Are there others? I see that hand. Praise God. Of the Lord our God. If you are here and you just lifted your hand, we're all going to pray a prayer together. Let's pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for the free gift of salvation found through the blood of Jesus Christ. I am renewed. I am restored. And today, you have made all things brand new. Simple words that have had an eternal impact. And if I don't see you again on this side, we're going to party forever on the other side. God bless you, Hillsong. Oh, wow. How amazing was that? How blessed are we? 
Come on, give it up for John Gray this morning. Show your appreciation. So, so grateful, John and Aventa. Thanks so much for taking time to be with us this weekend. It's been a great joy to have you here. Uh, every person that just prayed that prayer right now, we have a Bible that we really would like to get to you, okay? It's such an important decision that you've made in your life. And there were numbers of people across all our campuses. And a lot of you put up your hand just then at the end and praying that prayer. And so we want to get a Bible that looks like this. It says Word, God's Word. And it's a magazine style Bible, beautiful Bible. And in the front, there's a card. If you just take a moment to fill that card in, it doesn't take long, like a couple of seconds. It just helps us help you. And today you've made a great first step. The Christian journey is filled with thousands of next steps. And we just want to help you with that journey, okay? So if you put your hand up, maybe one of the team are going to try and find you and they're going to try and bring a Bible to you. If you don't get given one, uh, maybe they didn't see where you put your hand up or you might not even have put your hand up, but you prayed that prayer. So all you want to do is on your way out in a few minutes time, that um, wherever, whatever doors you go out, wherever you're picking up kids, going out to the welcome lounge, the cafes, you're gonna see some of our team on the doors waving these free Bibles. And that's really the sign for you to walk up to them and say anything, just say something like, I prayed that prayer at the end. You won't even have to say a whole lot because if you approach them, they're actually waiting for you. They're standing there waving a Bible waiting for you. We've got hundreds of these Bibles. We're not gonna run out. So come and get yours and let us help you with that and take that next step. It'd be absolutely amazing. Can we take our seats for one moment? Absolutely brilliant ministry, John. Absolutely fantastic. From the men's event all the way through, just absolutely stunning. So we want to take a moment right now and be a blessing back to John and Aventa. So I'm going to ask you just to prepare, get ready as the team comes to serve us. We're going to give a love offering. It's, you, if you want to use the red envelope, you can. It's on or under your seat. It could be in front of you if you're here in this building. And there's details that you can fill on the back or you can put something in there. If you want to use your checkbook, which some people still do these days, just make it out to Hillsong Church. Um, even though you're making it out to our church, it's not going to us. It's just easier for us to put it through that way to them. So it'll all go to them. But whatever you want to do right now, let's take a moment. Um, and while you're doing that, while you're getting ready, why don't you just check the screens and have a look at the um, men's highlights. We do that. Keep receiving that love offering. That's awesome. I just want you to know I'm excited about, excited about speaking tonight. And uh, I'm hoping maybe... People are still connected in other campuses, but I'm speaking right across the church and I've got four months worth of frustration to let go tonight. So man, it's gonna be an awesome night. I'm gonna believe for God to move and I would love it if you guys could be here. And even if you don't normally come Sunday night, for me, would you do it for me? Cause uh, you know, I miss you all. It's gonna be fantastic. That frustration is frustration not being here, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not yeah. gonna tell people off. <laughs> I'll leave that for Monday with you. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad Monday's my day off. It's going to be amazing tonight. It's going to be amazing, seriously. Now get word out, get word out, really, um, because these guys, have they've been gone for a few months and it's so exciting to have you back. It really is. Thanks. It's going to be amazing tonight. Get word out, get people here. The other thing to let people know about is our Young and Free album recording next Friday night, which Brian was talking about before. So it's good. Tonight's going to be fun. Are we receiving that giving? Pass those containers down, all those campuses. Do you think he can get as high as John gets when he sings this song? I can't get neither low nor high as him. Can't get I was trying to get him and Taya to do a sing-off. We were trying to pump him to do a sing-off with Taya, but he chickened out. You're ready. You won't do it. Here he comes. <laughs> Come on, there's a heavyweight title right now. Here we go. Heavyweight title, USA versus Australia. We got on the blue corner from the USA, John Gray. And from the red corner from Sydney, Australia, we've got Taya Smith. Here we go. Jim. 
mantle. Father, we thank You, You bless Your people and You keep them and You cause Your face to shine upon them. Thank You, Father, for Your anointing which was in this room. Lord, we just believe tonight is gonna be awesome. Have Your way in the lives of people, we pray. In Jesus' Name, Amen, Amen, Amen. Praise God. Oh, yeah. 